Hello Corkies, today I'm going to be showing you my favorite way to brew coffee at home. It's a pour over method and it's the 4-6 ratio method and it's won championships in brewing competitions and you could do it super simple at home with very little setup. You could use a Chemex or just a regular Hario V60 which is what I typically use at home. And make sure you stay tuned till the end because I'm going to be reviewing a delicious Texan pecan coffee, so stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome back to CorkandJava.com, your go-to place for coffee and wine reviews and how-tos. On this channel, we like to enrich and expand your experience with all of your favorite beverages. So if that sounds interesting, consider hitting that subscribe button below and that little bell so you're notified when our future videos come out. All right, so today I'm gonna to be sharing what I consider the best method for doing pour over coffee at home, whether it's Chemex or Hario V60. It's super easy. Start out with taking some tap water. I like to have a little bit of mineral in it and uh, get it up to about 195 to 200 degrees. Um, if you don't have a kettle with a thermometer, you could always use a meat thermometer or candy thermometer to measure the temperature, or you can bring it up to a boil and let it sit for about one minute, and uh, then it'll be, should be right back down to the temperature you need it. So we start out here with pre-measured about 20 grams of coffee and you gotta you want to make sure you have a burr grinder um, like this one here um, we do a review of this one actually i find this is one of the best budget burr grinders out on the market for about eighty dollars or it's under a hundred dollars pretty much everywhere but uh you want to have it at a coarse setting uh something similar to what you would use for a french press maybe dialed slightly back but still pretty coarse of a grind so you want to grind it up. All right, so now we are going to get everything ready. We got our paper filter here and our water uh, sitting around 205 degrees. First, we're going to pre-wet the paper filter and get the cup also warmed up. So once you do that, you want to dump it. All right, next, we're gonna take our coffee that we just freshly grounded and dump it in. And then, we wanna make a little kind of divot in the center there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. A little divot. And then the four, six method. So let me explain how this works. So we're splitting the water into two sections, 40%. And 60%. All right, so we want about 300 milliliters of water for the 20 grams of coffee that we ground. And we're splitting that, like I said, into a 40% category and a 60% category. The first 40% you do two pours of. So you could either do a, um, a short first pour and a long second pour to equal 40% of the water. And the shorter you make the first pour, the sweeter the cup you're gonna have. And uh, the longer you make that first pour, the more robust kind of coffee you're gonna have. So you gotta kinda try to make that trade off. I usually do about 50-50. So a 20% um, of the water and then another 20% for the first pour. you want to kind of do kind of circle patterns make sure you're incorporating all of the water into all the grounds and I usually give it a little bit of a, a shake here you can use a spoon and stir it up a little bit just to make sure all the grounds are in contact with water then what you want to do is let it sit until all the water is drained out typically about 45 seconds or so and then you'll start the second pour of the first 40 percent which will get us up to 40% of our cup. 
making circular patterns like this, making sure you get all the coffee off the edges and all into the cup. Perfect. So I did a little bit of a shorter first one because I want this one to be a fairly sweet cup for me because it is a Texas pecan uh, roast. So it's got really, really awesome sweet pecan flavors that I want to definitely accentuate um, using this method here. Shaking it up a little bit, making sure all the grounds get fully saturated with that water. We're gonna let it sit and run out and then we'll start the 60% portion. And the 60% portion or the, the remaining water that we need to do, um, how we uh, do that portion is gonna determine the strength of our coffee. So basically the more iterations you, you use with the, the remaining 60%, the stronger your cup is gonna be. So if you want a, a little bit milder cup, not super strong, you're gonna do two iterations or even one full iteration, although I don't recommend that uh, with the remaining 60%. You wanna do, if you want it lighter, a two iterations. So you'll do a 30% of the water, let it drain all the way, then another 30%. If you want it uh, medium, you'll do three uh, different um, pours with the remaining 60%. And if you want a really strong cup, you'll do four pours of the remaining 60% of water. So, all right, the 40% is done, and we're gonna do uh, three different pours of the remaining 60%. So it's about adding 20% each time. So pretty close to what we did on the, the first two, we're gonna just continue doing that uh, for the remainder of the pours. And I keep shaking it up a little bit every time, just making sure nothing sticks to the sides and we don't have um, anything under extracted because it's stuck to the paper on the side. All right, next 20%. Give it a little stir. By the way, guys, this is the coffee that I'm currently uh, brewing right now. Uh, a friend of mine from the Anarcho-Christian podcast, Stephen Rose, sent this out to me uh, from Texas. Um, and to my knowledge, this is something you can only get locally in the San Antonio uh, area, but this is a pretty staple thing in Texas to have uh, pecans roasted in with uh, the coffee and to get that robust pecan flavor. It's almost like pecan pie tasting, to be honest. It's delicious, um, but yeah. Awesome, shout out to Steven for sending me this. Thank you so much. I'm gonna be reviewing it after our final 20% here. All right, now we just gotta let it go. Leave a comment down below with what your favorite coffee brewing methods are. What do you typically do for your daily routine? And do you have anything special you do for when you have extra time on the weekends or anything like that? I'd like to know down in the comment section. And also, if you like this content so far, consider giving us a thumbs up. All right, she is done there. And let's give it a taste now. Oh, that's the perfect cup. Nice, awesome pecan flavors, and that sweetness is coming in so strong because we had that shorter first pour in that 40% section, and it is super smooth, and it's packed with flavor. It's got like that mouthfeel and the flavor of like a super strong, almost espresso flavor, um, but it doesn't have that bitterness that you get a lot of times with uh, coffee that you aren't preparing either with the right grind size, without the right temperature, or you're going too fast, too slow, or you're just letting the beans under extract or over extract. This four, six method or 40%, 60% method, splitting them, and uh, it just, it, it makes the perfect pour over cup. Um, you gotta give it a try and let me know down in the comments what you think, and uh, if, if there's a better pour-over method out there, I would like to know what it is, but 
I'm going to continue using this one because it is by far my favorite. I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of this video. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, uh, our group Cork and Java there. We have some great interaction with all of our fans, all of our Corkies there. And uh, make sure you check us out there uh, so you can get in on a lot of the conversation. Also check us out on Twitter and on Pinterest. We're always pinning some uh, great stuff to really expand your experience with uh, your favorite beverages, including coffee. So until next time guys, Bottoms up.